For those who don't know me, my name is Wayne Lee. I'm the president of the Norbury Lions Club. And uh, all those in the Lions Club, please raise your hands. Thank you. This makes the program shorter. <laughs> yeah. So um, at the end of the program, uh, you'll have the opportunity, all the veterans, you're invited to come up and introduce yourself. Okay, so uh, let's start uh, the program by raising the flag. We will play the, the two of the colors. So if you're, uh, if you are a veteran or uh, in the military, you have the option to uh, salute. So who's raising the flag? There you go. We have our sheriff department here to raise our flag. Okay, now we will play the national anthem. So um, I just want to introduce a, a few dignitaries. We have Mayor Ruben Holliver. Thank you, Ruben. We have Vice Mayor Ann Schneider. We have Supervisor Dave Pine. Thank you, Dave, for coming out here. Former Mayor uh, Robert Gottschalk and uh, Captain Gottschalk. And former Mayor Dan Quigg. Sorry, Dan, I'm the, I don't know your rank. And uh, so I want to thank uh, the Lions Club for putting this together, particularly uh, Lion Dan Quigg, Lion John Duca, Lion Rob Dakote for organizing the uh, going around the town and asking restaurants to participate. So um, the restaurants and uh, uh, Tai Wu, Fiddlers, uh, La Clina, Olsamio, Lai Lai's, um, 60 Mile House, and Peter's Cafe are offering 20% off to all veterans who show their ID today. 25% for some restaurants. And then 10% off all wines at Baca's uh, Winery. So we'd like to thank them again for their participation. Oh, Cafe Stop. Roman, thank you for reminding me. That's my favorite. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Veterans Day is uh, November 11th. It, is, it was originally um, in honor of the Armistice of World War I, which was November 11th, 1918. Uh, it was announced a year later, and then over time became known as Veterans Day. Um, it's a day that we honor all veterans who've served our country um, throughout our history, those who are with us, those who are no longer with us, and uh, the tradition that we have of honoring veterans of people who have put their lives on the line to ensure the freedom and the safety of all Americans is something that um, is just incredible. Um, the, the selflessness is, is what we're honoring today. Um, so thank you to all the veterans who are with us, um, who've served our city, who, um, through the Lions, through the Rotary, through the Council, um, and 
uh, who have served our country uh, either stateside or abroad um, over the many decades uh, of service. Um, so thanks everyone. Uh, hope everyone has an opportunity to enjoy the day, to reflect, and um, for those veterans in the audience uh, who are with us, please um, go to our restaurants and support our restaurants and thank you for the restaurants for, for uh, participating and supporting this event as well. All right, so thanks everyone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I also want to thank uh, uh, our uh, planning commissioners, uh, Kathy Quigg and uh, Maureen Davis for coming out. And also thank the Sheriff's Department for supporting us. And also uh, city staff uh, made put together this amazing, uh, made everything possible, Tom Williams, our city manager. So I'd like to invite uh, Supervisor Dave Pine, County Supervisor, to come and say a few words. Well, thank you and good morning, everyone. Um, now, I, I did not um, serve in the, the country's armed forces, and I feel just a real sense of indebtedness to all those that, that have, have. You know, those have served in the wars and conflicts that this country has been engaged in, and those who serve, serve today to defend our freedom and to preserve the, the stability that um, this country needs to su succeed and prosper. Um, I just feel a great sense of personal and, and, and indebtedness because I, I feel that the, the veterans have, you know, a, a allowed me and my family to um, prosper here as Americans. And I, I sincerely thank them and honor them on this Veterans Day. Thank you. Good morning to all the sailors, airmen, Army personnel, Coast Guard personnel. Welcome and thank you for being here today. I think this is the first time that we've actually come together on Veterans Day here in the city of Millbrae to recognize all of you for your service. So thank you and thank you for being here today. And most, most importantly, a big oorah to all the Marines out there. <laughs> Yesterday, the Marine Corps turned 245 years old. It was November 10th, 1775 at Tun Tavern. If you know Marines, of course they were founded in a tavern. So uh, thank you for being here. Congratulations to the city. Thank you for the Sheriff's Department for being here, all of our guests and elected officials for this uh, kind of inaugural celebration of Veterans Day. So as you'll see, we, we do have a table here. This table represents the fallen soldiers. And to explain it, the white tablecloth symbolizes the pure intentions of the service members who responded to the country's call to arms. The single rose in the base symbolizes the blood that service members have shed to sac in the sacrifice to ensure the freedom of the United States and our allies. This rose represents, also represents the family and friends who keep the faith while waiting the return of the missing service members. The red ribbon around the base represents the love of country that inspired the service members to serve their country. The slice of lemon on the plate represents the bitter fate of the missing. The salt sprinkled on the bread plate symbolizes the tears shed by waiting families. The inverted glass represents the fact that the missing and fallen cannot partake. And a lit candle symbolizes the light of hope that lives in the hearts to illuminate the missing's way, the missing's way home. And the empty chair represents the absence of the missing and the fallen. So again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today. And thank you for your service. God bless you and a happy Veterans Day. Thank you, Lion Tom. So uh, we didn't light the candle for obvious reasons, but, <laughs> but it's there. Um, so at, at this point, I'd like to invite uh, veterans to come and say, uh, introduce themselves and uh, state your uh, the service branch you served in and any campaigns you would like to, uh, that you would participate in. Can I start with Captain uh, Gotcha, former Mayor Gotcha? Thank you, Mr. Lee. I hope I don't take too long this morning, but um, I spent 26 years in the Navy Reserves, including three and a half on the Aircraft Carrier Constellation, doing some bombing off the coast of Vietnam. And when the uh, Desert Storm came in 91, I was supposed to go to the flagship in the Persian Gulf. And they determined that my lineal number was too senior for outranking other captains on the ship. 
And so they were going to send me to Pearl Harbor to the Commander-in-Chief Pacific Fleet Headquarters, and another captain and I were going to uh, stand 24-hour watches. Uh, after five weeks of waiting, they decided to not to send me. Um, so eventually, I was asked to retire so that they could have room for other captains. So that's my story, and I'm very glad to be here this morning. I particularly thank those who organized everything and those who were able to come here this morning. Thank you. Hello, my name is Paul Harrell. My father was an Air Force Colonel after 30, over 30 some odd years. And sure, the family say, okay, the next one had to go in because uh, I, I went in during the Vietnam era and I did my term and so did my brother. But being in the Air Force helped me through my life to keep strong and helping out one another. And, uh, and find out that the military has that uh, edge that uh, keeps your mind straight and keep helping one another and building efforts for everyone else. My name is Rich Bortolin. I was drafted in 1959, pre-Vietnam. Took my basic in Fort Riley, Kansas with the 1st Division. Transferred to the 4th Division in Fort, Riley, uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. Then they sent us to Alaska for three months of cold weather training. Then we came back, then they started pulling guys, this is 1960, and they were pulling uh, people out of there and sending them to Vietnam as advisors. Uh, quite interesting. I enjoyed it, I, I was very fortunate. I was one month shy of going to Vietnam, so I stayed back, but was, um, my MOS was a 112, which was like a machine gunner. But then I also had a good job as a company mail clerk. And when you're company mail clerk, nobody messes with you. You're, you're God. But it, it was a great experience, and, it's, and I really feel that it's too bad that they eliminated the draft. But thank you, and God bless America. Good morning. My name is Dan Quigg. I was in the United States Army. Um, all my time was spent stateside. I did my basic training in Fort Ord, California. And then I was sent to the Presidio San Francisco, and I spent four months at the Presidio San Francisco. And then I was off for two months, and then President Kennedy called 188,000 of us back in during the Berlin crisis when they built the wall. So I was one of the uh, 188,000 that got called back, and then we spent 10 months back in the Army. I spent most of that time at Fort Ord and Camp Roberts. We got activated at one time and we got packed up ready to go to Germany, but we never did go to Germany. So all my duty was spent stateside. Now my younger brother, he was drafted. He went to Vietnam. He was a medic on the pilot and with the helicopters and he did his duty in Vietnam. He's still suffering uh, with um, damage from Agent Orange, it keeps eating away at his skin and they have to keep grafting skin, so he had a hard time. So uh, anyway, we were both in the Army. Thank you. Sergeant John LaDuca, U.S. Army. I was drafted in 1969, uh, did my basic at Fort Lewis, Washington, my advanced training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. We were all in the barracks waiting for orders to go to Vietnam and one of the captains came in and called out five names. I was one of them. He said, you guys are going to Korea. So I spent a year and a half in Korea right up on the zone, making sure the North Koreans stayed on their side of the river and we were on our side. Uh, so uh, I spent my 21st birthday in basic training. One of the sergeants snuck in a case of beer. So we were all drinking and then pretty soon they found all the empty cans. So every day we were called the dirty dozen. They made us do 20 push-ups. <laughs> so anyway, it's an honor to be here. I'm glad I served. I will never, ever forget the experience, and uh, God bless America. <laughs> He's been practicing that all day. He was in a bugler. So uh, Rob Ducote, uh, United States Navy officer. I did both aviation and surface warfare. Uh, we actually were on, I was on duty during 9-11, so we supported Operation Enduring Freedom. Served on a couple of different ships, uh, notably USS Princeton and USS Boxer over in the Persian Gulf. Uh, boy, it's hot over there. We appreciate Millbridge weather. Go spend some time over there. It can get pretty warm. Um, 
was honored to serve. I followed a tradition in my family where I think I was the fifth generation straight to serve our country, uh, but I was only the second to choose the Navy. So everyone else went Army in Army Air Corps back in the day. So I'm proud of my service. I continue to serve as I transitioned out of the military into federal service, which I continue to do today. I think service is something that's important to pass on to our children and our grandchildren and the importance of it to our, to our country, What's what makes us unique as a nation. So I'm honored to be here today and uh, salute to all of my fellow veterans. Michael Metcus, uh, U.S. Army Europe. My claim to fame is I was over there with Elvis and we can't forget Elvis. He supported us. He was one of the guys. We had breakfast on the ship together. He gave a little concert, and then, of course, uh, the rest of the time in Europe, he was a very, very good representative of the U.S. Army. And thank my fellow veterans. Thank you, thank you. I served in the uh, United States Marine Corps, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Uh, started out in aviation, ended up driving a tank. Uh, but uh, I appreciate all the veterans. Uh, most of my time was spent in San Diego, probably the toughest duty I had. Uh, ne never saw any combat action because this was in the uh, in the 80s when I served. Um, but survival training at 29 Palms, talk about hot, and that was uh, end of June through uh, the end of August. So um, again, all the veterans, thank you again for being here. Thank you for your service. Um, I was definitely proud to serve my country, and I know you all are as well. So hopefully this is the first of many traditions here starting the city of Millbrae to, to uh, support and recognize our veterans, so thank you. Okay, first of all, let's give a big hand for our veterans and our active service members. So I just want to do one other shout out for uh, the sea cadets who are trying to get here, but they're out other, uh, they have a band that goes around and, and they, uh, they're they kind of like the military band because there's no other military units here and they go and, and um, they usually come to uh, support us, and they play for all vet most veterans' events, but uh, they weren't able to come, so at least acknowledge them. So uh, that concludes our program. Please have some coffee and donuts, and uh, enjoy your day, and thank you for your service again. You really, you really made some quite a, quite a sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you.